My name is Jim Dar. I'm director for the center. This evening, we're honored to have as our guest a gentleman who was born and raised in Oklahoma and who is paying great heights in American abstract art and at this time enjoys indeed an international <laughs> reputation in the field of art. This evening, he will be discussing uh, some of his paintings. His lecture and his uh, presentation is entitled The Evolution of an Idea. At this time, would you help me welcome artist Leon Oak Smith. Where do you? I'll push the button if you want to talk. You just keep on pushing the button. Give me the beeps. Don't stand up here. Okay, you give me the beeps and I'll get them moving. Um, I'm going to show you about a uh, hundred color slides, a part of the work I have done over almost a period of 50 years, starting back in the 30s and comes up to 1986. And the, the main thing I wish to uh, illustrate in showing you this work is how uh, an idea can evolve or the evolution of an idea, the development of an idea. Starting out really in the 30s, most definitely by 1942 with a certain type of abstract art and staying with that. I mean, I emphasize is that I stayed with this idea. Uh, not just painting the same way for 50 years, I don't mean that. Uh, it was a, uh, an evolution of the way that I started out. Each year changing a little. Never did I sit down and think, now what am I going to do next year? How, how will I, shall I paint next? I waited for the inner voice to show me the way for the, the next step. And I never worried about it. I just kept on painting, and the first thing I know, I said, well, I'm going to do something this way, uh, which was uh, not changing the way that was a step farther in the process of evolution. So we'll start with a few paintings from 1930 during the Depression. I had many, uh, quite a number of paintings from the uh, 1930s, but I think uh, to uh, represent the five decades, I only got four or five or six from the 30s in this. Uh, some of them uh, are a little bit reminiscent of uh, the, the ranch life where I grew up. I'm not sure whether I got any uh, in any of the slides that uh, represent the uh, the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl era. There might be something of that. Um, and I do know there is one, uh, my first trip to New York, the summer of 1936, I went through the South for the first time, went through Georgia and saw the Georgia chain gangs uh, working on the side of the highway with their horizontally striped suits on and chains around their ankles and steel balls and and I was uh, most impressed with that. It wasn't easy to get out of my mind. And um, I did a painting of that. And uh, uh, when I did the painting, if you think the drawing is the, uh, somewhat strange or that I was influenced by Picasso, uh, I, yes, I had seen Picasso uh, work by uh, then, but I really wasn't influenced by that. I was influenced by Martha Graham, the modern dancer. Uh, I, I had seen her <clears throat> uh, dance for the first time at uh, Bennington, Vermont, and uh, I'd never seen any dance before except the uh, uh, Oklahoma square dance and the crown dance, and we'd always done that. I'd never seen the ballet, and I had never studied the, the history of dance. So I was fortunate that I had no hang-ups. I couldn't say, well, you know, I've seen the ballet and it is so wonderful. I don't like modern, the modern dance. I, I love modern dance from the very beginning. And I felt then and know now that uh, Martha Graham was one of the great minds of uh, the 20th century. So maybe we'll start out with something here. Uh, this is my very first oil painting as a student at the Columbia University. Uh, I suppose that was uh, done the, the first uh, summer that I was there, or the second summer. 
R36, R37, and of course I must have uh, already felt the rumbling of the, of the war in, in Europe. Um, I don't know how much I should uh, go into this, if, uh, uh, maybe ju just quickly I'll show you a few things, and most of you know this, it's, it's, it's so uh, very elementary, uh, and this is not a great painting, I only keep it as, as part of the record, it's something that I did, and there has to be a beginning, and I have to show the beginning and how, how everything that developed, uh, but I did, uh, the, the first course that I had uh, with uh, uh, Miss Ida Hoover at the East Central, it, it was in uh, composition. And that was a wonderful course. No one in the world should get through college, or even if you don't go to college without studying uh, composition and, and art and uh, the art appreciation. I, I just think everyone should know it. It makes life so much. How, how do you really look at a painting? Well, I knew this from the very beginning. Soon as she started talking about it, it seems that I knew it all. It, it's a, a, like a the archaeologists can find a, a little piece of, of pottery and study that and create the whole design that went around it from a very small part of it. Uh, Miss Hoover only had to start with a very few of the minor rules of composition and it just seemed like I could put the whole thing together. I knew what it all uh, was. Uh, well, here, this is built uh, principally on the diagonal running uh, this way, the, the major diagonal, and then here are minor diagonals of places and then there's the uh, more uh, the, this, these are more minor and uh, well this close it's not easy to see but also the circle and the, and the skulls and the cannon and the wheel and the heads and and so forth that plays a great part in the rhythms coming down through uh, like this so you, you look for those things uh, the the more we know about art the more we appreciate it if, if we don't know anything about it maybe we may look at it only for the story it might tell. Now, what does it mean? Uh, we might say about art. And what does it mean has nothing to do with art. You don't ask about a great piece of music, what does it mean? You feel it. And uh, uh, art, uh, its meaning, uh, it represents itself, nothing else. Uh, this uh, type of art, uh, uh, it's, an, uh, it's really illustration. It does tell a story. And it's the main purpose, I think, this illustration of okay. Jake. Okay. Well, of course, this is uh, still from the ranch. I was uh, trying to see if I could uh, really uh, draw a pig and a chicken and the cows and uh, not uh, exactly uh, uh, naturalistically like a photograph. But uh, uh, if you uh, think of a cow, an animal, horse or chicken, maybe in the dark, before you go to sleep. It's the way you sort of feel it and think it. Uh, uh, you don't see it absolutely uh, naturalistically. You know too much about the animal to see it that, that way because you have felt it, the heart you have ridden. Um, and uh, 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 all of these things we know about it that come into our feeling, it's, it's more than what the eye has seen. And I think uh, you two people recognize this as me. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying the milk to the milk house. And here, mm -hmm. let's see what this is. I uh, studied perspective. I never felt that it belonged in the heart. I studied uh, shading to uh, make a form look voluminous in its volume, its three-dimensional effect. That didn't appeal to me necessarily either. And uh, so from the very beginning, I, I painted things, uh, in a sense, flat, but yet you, you still feel that, that, that they have form. I use no perspective whatsoever uh, but I think you feel that there is space in it. Uh, with with the perspective, you can almost measure the, 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 the space. You know how far it is from one fence post to the other, from one telephone to the post to the other. How many can you see before it reaches the uh, 
to the point on the horizon where all of the uh, horizontals tend to move, like looking down the railroad track, and you count, uh, you multiply those uh, those distances by the number of feet between posts, and you know exactly how much space there is there. Uh, but with the, the flat, so-called flat way of painting, a space becomes almost like an infinity. You, can, you can't measure it. It's like, how far is it to the sky? Well, if you didn't know, you might think that it's uh, three or four hundred feet at times. 